So in an earlier post, James mentioned Einstein and his physical theories of mass and energy. And uh, I'm not sure if he was just mentioning that as an example of the kind of um, certain proof that we have to develop somehow of, sp of uh, spiritual technology or subtle energy, or if he was actually pointing to that equation itself, E equals MC squared, as evidence of subtle energy. Because I think that equation is really saying that matter is energy. Um, and I just wanted to read a few, two paragraphs from... Uh, Gene Gebser's book about the new physics and the integral structure of consciousness influencing our understanding of the physical world. <clears throat> the supersession of dualism is yet another result of the new physics. The way was prepared by Einstein, who fused the oppositional categories of space and time into the unity of the space-time continuum. His verification that energy and mass slash matter were not opposites but as we have described above, merely differing manifestational forms of one and the same thing points in the same direction. The most pointed statement of this new knowledge comes from Eddington, who calls mass only another name for energy, thereby emphasizing the aspect of physical energy. The consistent application of such discoveries in quantum theory as the uncertainty principle has led to such objective and not merely philosophical conclusions as that of Arthur March, who observed that the world is inseparable from the observing subject and is accordingly not objectifiable. Thus, even the old antinomies of the world versus man, object versus subject, became, like mental perspectivity, untenable from the standpoint of physics. As a consequence of quantum theory, physics also was compelled to abandon its venerable principle of causality. On the basis of the universal quantum of action discovered by Planck, we now know that the basic course of events is a-causal, discontinuous, and indeterminate. Both the consistency and the sequential consistency, which represent the basic laws of conceptual thought, have become to a considerable degree illusory, at least in physics. Today, physics is no longer in the position to defend a strict determinism. It must of necessity reduce the earlier certainty of its predictions to mere probability. It is compelled to do so because the processes of nature do not cohere continuously as was previously believed, but are interrupted by discontinuities through which we cannot trace the causality. Those are the words of Arthur March. It is this dematerialization which we might also define as a delimitation, accompanied by a removal of temporal limits, inasmuch as the quantum of action has no temporal limitation, which gives present day physics its non visualizable stamp. In other words, there's no image of an atom, no image of an electron. They are mathematical concepts. Again, in the words of Ar Arthur March, this is the standpoint arrived at by physics today. The objective essence of things consists of a structure and not something of substance. Let us take, for example, the electron. Its appearance is that of something real, a substantial particle which belongs to the real and objective world and is not just something conjured up by our imagination. But let us not be deceived by this appearance. If we analyze in depth the experiences on which our faith in the existence of a substantive electron rests, nothing remains except a system of, cons of constant relationships, which is termed a structure in mathematics, so that we are required to accept these relationships and not the substantive particles as the true reality. And the extent to which our doubts about the objective existence of a substantive electron are correct is proven by our experience with particles which shed their physical properties and behave not like a corp puzzle, but like a wave. So even matter is wave-like. It's energy. It's alive. It's creative. It's connected to us. So I think having physics uh, on our side, in a sense, I mean, they're not going to take sides, obviously, because they're just an objective, well, not objective, but a disinterested science trying to find 
the truth of at least the pattern, if not the substance, if there's no substance. Science is trying to look for a repeatable, consistent pattern. And what physics has found so far about the material world is not that it's material, but that it's energy. And I don't think a mystic ever said anything different. 